So, um, we've reached the end. Uh, this is the last of the videos in the V-Ray Basic Render School series. And I'm just going to show you a quick introduction to the Sun and Sky system. And, uh, and then uh, that's actually it for this first basic series. Um, and I really, really hope that uh, it's been of some sort of use. But uh, first of all, let's get rendering. I have set up uh, V-Ray like we always do. Uh, color mapping, oops, actually it didn't. It should have done that. Um, and I'm using the V-Ray frame buffer. And this yes, should still look the same, beautiful. And, and what we want to do now is use the sun and sky system, which you can find at the bottom here under the V-Ray tab. I'm going to create a sun and I'm going to create a sky. And I'm not going to hit render and it gets really, really bright. And that is basically because this sun and sky system is based off something that's probably very scientific, uh, which means that uh, our images well, the sun is just very bright, which uh, suns do tend to be. So what we need to do is select our camera, whichever camera we're rendering from, go to attributes and add the physical camera uh, attributes. And they're down here. And we'll just tell it to treat as V-Ray physical cam. And hit render. And all of a sudden it makes a bit more sense. Um, see what it actually does. I think it's because we actually get an f-stop in there. Uh, so we, we, we stop the image down. Um, and and whether or not this physical camera really does a lot of good stuff, I, I can't figure out. Um, but in theory, you should be able to match, like if you have your HDRs normalized and you know what camera you're shooting with and what the settings were, you could go ahead and uh, and, and, and plug all that stuff in here and you should be uh, you should be golden for uh, matching your stuff up <clears throat> but the V-Ray Sun and Sky system is a system for creating well, sunlight uh, it gives you a sky that creates uh, if you have GI on it will create a bounce from the color of the sky and you get a sun which will change color like this high noon it will be oops very bright and uh, well, I wouldn't say colorless, but compared to what happens once we go evening here on it, you see how it gets a lot warmer. Uh, the whole sky itself actually uh, adjusts as well, and <clears throat> it gets warmer too. And it is a very quick way of just getting a light on your scene, especially for like turntables and stuff. Um, but there are a couple of parameters you'll want to know off. Intensity makes sense. Uh, let me just see if I can get this right. Turbidity and ozone is, uh, I think the turbidity will, yeah, that will uh, saturate it more or less. Uh, so if you want to get like even more color in there, you up this guy, ozone will um, get rid of, uh, like, almost desaturate it, uh, cool it down. Um, so those are like, if, if they feel kind of random to me, but but you can see a sample of what you're getting. Um, the size is more interesting because that will soften your shadows as such. Uh, and you don't have to stick with uh, 10 as maximum, you just dial in whatever you want and you get nice uh, soft shadows um, which is, is just like yeah uh, it, it actually makes this system look quite uh, quite neat um, and it is very useful for like simple lighting situations uh, oops, here we go um, you have of course uh, this is sky model thing and I think that's uh, just whatever is your preference uh, the difference is uh, I think very scientific 
Uh, it's, it's whatever model it uses to define how the sky looks. So if you know something about that, then uh, by all means. But as you can see, we've got GI on now with the sky model, and it gets us a really nice soft result. So, so it is it is nice in that that way. Cast shadows if you want to. Cast shadows from environment is if you have volumetrics in there, it's actually gonna cast shadows off of that, uh, which is very very cool. You've got shadow color and and other than, like other than these first couple of, of things, it it acts just like any old light so it's a nice and simple way of getting uh, getting light in there um, it's not highly controllable but it gives you a nice result so like I definitely I, w I wouldn't mind if I was a modeler uh, using this for my uh, turntables see how pretty that is <clears throat> So uh, just bear in mind that you need to use the physical camera for the sun and sky system to make any kind of sense. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be blown out, uh, not very useful. And with that being said and done, I think we probably hit like two hours of, uh, of training in uh, this V-Ray Basics module. And I certainly hope that... Uh, it's uh, somehow help you out, um, and that it, uh, it's it's been good to you. Um, I'm guessing if you're if you're here uh, at the very end, uh, you've uh, at least gotten something out of it. So I appreciate you watching. Um, Renderschool.com is also doing uh, like more training, uh, both free and paid for. And I would definitely appreciate if you head on over to the website, renderschool.com, and check out what other stuff I'm uh, putting up there and sign up for the newsletter so, um, so I can keep in touch with you guys and, uh, and uh, you can tell me what, what else you, uh, you want and if there's anything you want done differently or, or what have you. Because I'm all ears and... Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, this is uh, useful for someone. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, especially if you if you watched from beginning to end, uh, definitely kudos for uh, for staying staying on. And uh, until next time, well, I hope to uh, to 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 be able to show you some more stuff. So take care and have a good day.